How's Banjo Gaioli? He is an asshole. <laughs> All right, folks, so today I've got three PC floppy drives uh, that I got recently. It's actually from a, a bigger batch that I got, and they were uh, five euros each. Um, so, I, so, I mean, it's not much of a risk. Uh, at that price, I was told they work. You know, you have to believe the seller in those cases. And uh, so we're gonna, well, first clean them. And then my goal is to convert them to Amiga uh, floppy drives. Now, luckily, there's plenty of guys available, and this will be essentially just one uh, more video on uh, how to do this. Uh, the cool thing about these is these three, at least, are uh, Sony MPF uh, 920 and uh, the Z121 uh, variant. There's uh, two of these, uh, one, two, Z, one, two, one. And this one here is uh, a B53. Uh, uh, it's also an MPF model, but they're slightly different. And a bit of rust on the cage here. Uh, but the good news is all of them can be easily converted to Amiga floppy drives. There's a couple of jumpers to set. I think one cut to tra uh, trace to cut. And, uh, and we should be good. So let's open this guy. And I think the PCB is uh, the access to the PCB. It's this guy. So we need to remove here. And we should have four screws, uh, three, three screws here. Uh, one, two, three, and I think that's all we need. We might still need to remove the top of the cage. We're gonna give these a clean as well, so let's get started. Mr. President, this is ridiculous. Just do it. A PCB way has sponsored a who, new video. Who the hell are they? They offer PCB manufacturing and part assembly, of course, but they also offer a number of other services like CNC machining, metal sheet fabrication, 3D printing, and even injection molding. Go to PCBWay.com, upload your project files, and get an instant quote. And thank you to them for sponsoring this video. What should we do, Mr. President? Get the president on the phone. Dude, you are the president. I'll have what she's having. Right, this is our PCB exposed, so we need to do three things, or a number of things really, uh, more than three. Uh, first we need to cut this trace here, at uh, uh, pin 34, uh, cut the trace that comes out of it, and connect pin 34 to uh, this guy here. There's, a, a, lit, there's a, a number of little connectors, there's four of them, you connect that to the third here. Uh, there's a, a little component here which is actually a jumper, just a jumper. We need to add uh, a JC31, we need to disconnect that and put it a JC, a JC, JC30. Uh, or if we lose it in the process, the process it's quite small, which it can happen if you don't have a, a, a microscope. We're going to uh, use just a little piece of wire. And third, we need to connect a wire from here, uh, marked by uh, where the number one is. It's number one for this connector, but it is a little uh, pad here, and we're going to connect that to this guy here. That's the trace cut. We're also going to check that it is indeed cut. Yeah, it's cut. And yeah, it doesn't reach. Okay, so that's our surgery done. We also want to check that it is indeed Connected. Okay, and this here is disconnected. Right. Yeah. 
Okay, that worked. Uh, next, I'm going to connect uh, this guy here to pin 34. Look at that, we get a, a, a lifted trace. We got caps on the other side here. No! We got a trace. So here, that is, yeah, completely lifted. We need to fix that, don't we? Right, we got our three drives uh, modded here, and uh, this is the uh, one two one and the uh, B forty uh, three, B fifty three, and uh, uh, so there's not a ton of cleaning that we need to do on these. So the rule here on these any drive really is don't touch anything unless you have to. The only thing we're concerned with is, is uh, removing the old grease from this guy, but I think it's, yeah, it's moving freely. So we're just going to remove the old grease from this. All these uh, threads, you can actually see it here. It's uh, gunged up or whatever. Um, uh, apply new grease. Uh, to remove it, I'm just going to use cotton buds in alcohol and just slowly, uh, carefully, uh, just remove that and then reapply it. Uh, avoid uh, using cotton buds to apply it because it'll leave threads, little threads. Uh, so we're just going to use like a stick or maybe even a, a screwdriver or whatever, a flat surface just to apply it uh, all around. And then cotton buds in alcohol to clean the head here. So the bottom, and you want to be careful as well lifting this too high. There is some give. Uh, in this case, there's quite a bit of give on all of these. Um, so that's good news. But uh, remove the, clean the top and bottom. And that's all you need to do. Do not touch any of these guys like uh, this here. The, everything is aligned perfectly. Uh, so we certainly don't want to uh, disturb the alignment. Um, that would actually. Um, uh, uh, prevent us because like if you see here this is a little optocoupler here and what this does is it helps aligning with track zero uh, on the disc so if we move this um, even so slightly we could uh, change the uh, the position of track zero and we'll have to do a whole lot of calibration and it's uh, i mean it's feasible it's just painful and you know don't touch this unless you have to um, all right so I have uh, two drives it's a cool handy way to test two drives at once you put one on a DF0 and one a DF1 I have this one is the T53 and this is one of the uh, Z121 uh, and well it's 53 is booting right to uh, a mega test kit and if I select it and I send a signal test all right and if I test DF1 and send a signal test, <laughs> nice. Uh, and I'm just gonna do a retest on this guy on DF0. Uh, um, I've done this already, it goes through. Uh, so happy days. Uh, so I'm not gonna let that run. I'm gonna do a signal uh, retest on DF1. Sorry. And it's reading as well. I had the long, the, the hardest time getting this drive to work properly, even though I did everything that I, 
<laughs> should be done, um, which is not that much. Essentially, there's two ribbon cables here that go to the, the head, and these probably need a clean as well. I haven't done that in this one, it worked right away, but I, I'll do that next. Remove them just carefully like that. A uh, little bit of the oxide in the connector and uh, uh, clean on the uh, ribbon cable, and you should be good to go. Uh, yeah, this was... Um, uh, th th this is the only way I could get it to work essentially. So I'm going to do the same thing here and uh, and test again and report back. Oh yeah, one thing to note uh, is that on these uh, floppies here, you see this little uh, hole here that isn't present on, on uh, commercial floppies, and it's because. Um, this is a, an a HD a switch that I don't think is present on Amiga floppies, but because these are standard generic PC floppies, uh, this hole is, uh, is present here. So what we need to do is actually, uh, what, what we have is a little switch. You can see the little switch popping out. And this is how the disc also, there's two switches on the other side. Let me just show you. There's a, a there you go one here which is for the uh, copy protection and the other one is for the disk insert so it knows that the uh, the disk is being inserted or not so what we need to do on these uh, type of drives is actually uh, jumper uh, this uh, switch it's an HD uh, floppy uh, switch uh, because this is a generic PC uh, floppy we need to actually jumper that if we want to use those floppies. Uh, here, it doesn't matter, the switch is pressed all the time, so these Amiga floppies will read all the time. But this is one thing to uh, consider. If, you, if you're struggling to get that drive to uh, work or that mod to work, this is what you need to do. You need to jumper switch tree on those uh, uh, MPF uh, Sony uh, floppies. If you don't, this is what happens. It seeks for a while and then typically you'd get a red screen uh, but let's see if I now if I press this switch here there you go we're booting to Amiga test kit so we're gonna do the mod on this side Right, same treatment on the third drive, and uh, we're now reading uh, properly. Uh, I did have to uh, tinker with the alignment uh, slightly, and uh, well, this is not something <laughs> I wish on my worst enemy, to be honest. Um, it, it does require just fine tuning, uh, so avoid touching this if you can. And the idea for aligning is that you slightly loosen these two um, um, uh, uh, screws here and underneath you see that little shiny bit of metal you, see, you need to very very minutely micro adjust that uh, so it just it, it goes sideways and up and back and sometimes sometimes when this guy gets uh, you know this large sometimes the motor is a bit too strong and it can push this um, so you need to just either push it back or forward slightly if you uh, uh, if you can't align it with this one normally you don't need to touch that and you just uh, uh, realign the head slightly by moving this plate underneath it's micro adjustment and you need to uh, both align the lower and upper um, uh, uh, heads uh, for it to work. Anyway. Uh, as you can see, we're working and that's uh, that's three drives. I'm gonna put these back together and that's three drives cleaned, uh, restored and modded for Amiga. And there you go, folks. That's uh, three floppy drives uh, working or back working. Uh, they mustn't have been working before uh, because one had uh, issues with the head alignments, one had the missing track, and the other one had a problem with the ribbon connectors. Anyway, uh, they're back working. Uh, they're now modded, and uh, it's a simple mod. It's just two jumpers, one cut trace, and one little uh, uh, blob of solder, really. You don't need to reuse that. 
uh, that zero ohm resistor, you can sh remove it all together and use a blob of solder on the other pad. Uh, but folks, I hope this was interesting. Uh, I have more floppy drives to uh, convert. Uh, some are a different type, so I, I will do that maybe in a separate video. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.